Ooh, man. All right. Sports are done. Time for video games. As soon as I get on the right input, hold on a sec. Uh, this goes here. I think that's all legit. All right, switch inputs. So this capture card costs a whopping 28 bucks. And it looks like it works pretty well. The blacks kind of run a little bit, but it's the switch, you know, it doesn't need anything crazy. I've always heard about Phoenix Wright. I've seen him in the Marvel games and stuff, but I've never really tried to play the games myself. So I figured I've got some time. I'll give it a shot. Right off the bat, this music makes me think it's going to be a musical or something. Which I'm sure it's definitely not. Damn, 2014. The only thing that kind of bothers me about this is that there's no... There's no voice acting, but... I have a voice. Acting, the jury is out on that. What is that guy's face? Episode 1, the first turnabout. Gasp, gasp. And she got bought. Damn it, why me? At least it has auto advancing text. Guy looks like Joey Wheeler from the back. I think this game does have a good soundtrack. I'm pretty sure I've heard that. Boy, am I nervous. Well, they up the hell out of that art. A favor. It's over. <laughs> Who the hell is this guy? My life, everything, it's all over. He is like, what the hell? Death despair. So, so far it seems like Phoenix isn't doing the best job. I feel like they up it too much. This guy's name is Butts. Larry Butts. Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. The girlfriend responsible, or the person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. You fucked, Larry. My name is Phoenix Wright. I'm about kicking ass. Here's the story. Lady killed in her apartment. 
And this is the guy under arrest. When something smells, it's usually the butts. There's a knack for getting himself in trouble. I wonder if the Netflix series is just a scene for scene retelling of this game. This game's story. August 3rd, 10 a.m. <laughs> this guy. Hey, what's up, Beth? Yeah, it was on sale on the Switch, and I got this cheap capture card. This capture card was 28 bucks. So I was like, well, this is a good chance to try it out. And it was only 10 bucks for all these games. Anyway, what's good? Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. I've heard this song a lot, but I have not played the games. The um, defense is ready, your honor. First trial for Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. I'm uh, a little nervous now. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. He's not even looking at him. The judge does not care. Thank you, your honor. Mm. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. What's up, Gordon? Coworker brought apology brownies for a minor issue and I made myself sick eating them. They were so good. Damn, that's a nice coworker. They trying to get fresh with you, Beth? What's going on over there? So Gordon, I take it you've played all these games, Gordon. I've not played them, but they look cool. And for ten bucks, I got three of them. It's a steal. Yes, Your Honor. Dude, Phoenix, it's not cut for, out for this. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh, I don't... Uh, hold on. Larry Butts? The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. I was gonna say Phoenix Wright, but I, I've seen Night Court, so I remember. Haven't played the spinoffs, but you did play all the last one. Oh yeah, I saw they had a spinoff that set in, like, um different time period or something. I wonder if that one has voice acting. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? No, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's, uh, wait, uh, no. Oh! No way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank. Phoenix, what the hell are you doing? Absolutely sure you're up to this? That's his boss. Lovely Mia. You don't even know the victim's name. No, the victim, of course. I know the victim's name. Come on, man. Even I know the victim's name. I think it was Mia something. listed in the court record. <laughs> Just press the R button to check it out anytime, okay? Check it often. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in the case? It's Cindy. He has his moments, probably not. I mean, he's cool enough when he's not busy, but we just have a good working relationship as far as I know. I'm probably more friendly than he is. Like him being too nice? Hmm. Well, he brought you... Brought you brownies. Alright, it's Cindy. He's working his game. Just saying, keep an eye on that guy, Beth. 
Victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... She was hit with a blunt object. I saw it in the opening scene. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank, uh, thank you, Your Honor. No. He knows you like chocolate a lot. Sounds like a nice, nice cloak. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? Well, the murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. And it was found lying on the floor next to the victim. Mm, I see, the court accepts it into evidence. I've seen that statue. Oh, they were for everybody. Oh, well that's... I guess that's different. It's wild, it's kind of making me hungry now. I've been eating this, I've been eating this ice cream, y'all, that, but it's not really ice cream, it's called Yasso. And I think it's like frozen yogurt, but it kind of just makes you want, it just makes you want ice cream. God, I could go for some butter pecan right now. Like some real mint chocolate chip or birthday cake. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Mia, stop giving him tips. Uh, Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Oh wait, that's uh, Phoenix. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <laughs> this Yu-Gi-Oh character. <clears> hmm. <throat> Mr. Butts, it is, it, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. This guy's a goner. I wasn't dumped. He just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway, old man? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by don't. In fact, she had all, she had completely abandoned you and then was seeing other men. Jeez. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. The hell are you talking about? One of them? Lies, all lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. That is, in fact, a real passport. You'll watch out if anything specifically just for you shows up. You should drop him some hints. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. Now it appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. Wait a minute. Beth... This guy may want to be your sugar daddy. 
he's coming in with the brownies. He's coming in hot. He took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Bro, we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Wait and see what happens and stop him from answering. Mia's the chief. Let's stop him. Larry, shut the hell up! My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Ugh. Dude, Nick, what the hell? Irrelevant? Just a rare gift, to be honest. I'm just poking at you. Helps all more than he should. He couldn't one day. Those are reasons. Hmm. Plot thickens. That cheating she dog. Damn, Larry. He turned on here real fast. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna just drop dead. And when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Wow. Judge has seen enough. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh lord, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> maybe I did and maybe I didn't, Sky. Oh. Stop him. Don't let him say anything. Shut his ass. I'll send him a signal. Lie like a dog. Can you do that in court? Isn't he under oath? Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well, then, we'll just have to remind you. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Oh lord, they got a witness. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. You can say you don't remember. This is based on Japan's justice system at the time. Interesting. I wonder if any of the cases... I mean, it would be... I feel like it would be in bad taste if some of the cases were real. But maybe you're saying it's like a social commentary on how the system was in Japan in 2014. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's Bobby. Just before taking the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. <clears throat> Real lawyers want you to say as little as you need to. That's true. I've been watching The Wire, and any time any of the, the gangster dudes go into the police office, the lawyer's always, like, slapping them on the head and being like, shut the hell up. Don't say anything. Don't talk. Let me do the talking. I've never really been to court other than um, to, like, get a ticket resolved. I don't know if you guys have ever done jury duty or something. I hope I never have to do it. It sounds terrible, except for the part where they give you food. That sounds all right. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. Oh God, this is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank uh, Sawit Frank saw it to the stand. What a name. Look at this guy. Mr. Saw it. You sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, yeah. Newspapers, yeah. Mr. Saw it, you may proceed with your testimony. 
Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Cool font. Witness testimony. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. All the names are puns like Dr. Mao practice. This is right on the nose. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quelled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. He went in. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Boy, bouncing. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? God, I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Uh, aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Saw It used was one of those. Mm, sounds flimsy. Your Honor. I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Fine, he's the murder victim in this chapter. Man, I hope I never have to go to court. I don't want to deal with lawyers. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Your Honor. Yeah. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination? Your Honor. Right, right. This is it. The real deal. You, uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. You moron. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then the witness must have lied in his testimony. I imagine she's saying this under her breath out the corner of her mouth. Teaching him how to do his job in court on a case. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? <laughs> you hold the key, you moron. It's the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. Find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face like a dog. Uh, all right, I'll try, Mia. Open the court record with the R button and point out the contradictions in the testimony. Yeah, I don't know what it's like to be a lawyer. I can't imagine, like, I've watched some cases where the person is clearly guilty, like, but they still have a lawyer that has to defend them. Like, how does that person, how do they, how do they sleep? How do they deal with themselves? Like, I just watched the documentary on Jared from Subway just the worst of the worst. Like I knew it was bad, but I didn't know how bad it was. And even that guy had a lawyer that was defending him. I'm like, how does this lawyer exist? Like, how do you even function, dude? Crazy. Mr. Syed, I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing his apartment. That's what he said. Selling subscriptions. Attorney's badge. <laughs> Don't need that. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. 
blood due to trauma, statue. Oops. Hmm. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving dead. I mean, all of this sounds pretty legit. I quelled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Oh, I found that. There it is. It's it's the phone, but I don't know. I know, I got it, I got it. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Alright. I feel like this is a trap, but... Uh, where's the X button? Objection. The evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. Uh, how exactly are that evidence and the statement just now related? They aren't. Are they? Shit. I have a life bar in the top right, I just noticed. One of her apartment wasn't working. Wait, public phone. Maybe that's it. Well, that's Mrs. Stone's building. I mean, all of this sounds good. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. All right, hold on. Time of death, 4 p.m. 5 p.m. Got his ass. Hold it right there, buddy. You found the body at 1 p.m.? You sure about that? Ask- Oh! Yeah, it was 1 p.m. for sure. For true. I promise. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, uh, Gordon. I was nervous. I'm like, man, I'm going to suck at this game. There was nobody to, uh, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Whoa! Oh, that, uh, no. <laughs> this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Hell no. After his testimony, I found that hard to believe. Mr. Sard, why the hell were you so certain you found the body at 1 p.m.? No. Ah. Gee. That's a really great question, Your Honor. Good job, right? Way to put his ass on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. The cool tutorial. Pretty obvious most of the time. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> just fucking around with it. I think it's because I'm tired. Lies always beget more lies, right? T through one, and the whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. You care to give your testimony again? We go again. Yeah, you better be sure of the time. When you start throwing out numbers out there, it's like, okay, well, you can't really hide that. <clears throat> you see, when I found the body, I heard the time. Oh, come on, man, there's a blackout. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. All right. Cut it out. Cut it out, bro. I can't even, I can't even contradict him yet. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. Uh, that's it. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about that misunderstanding. You know we're going in hard. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Maybe the judge will call him out. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. Get in his ass. Don't 
Don't worry me, I've got this one. Get his ass, right? Cross-examination right off the bat. I wonder when you're supposed to do it, though. Oh, there we go. Show me the blackout! Hold it, asshole. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Duh! Yeah. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Oh god. I well irk. Irk. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this damn lie, Mr. Saw It? You ever seen shit in your life, Mr. Saw It? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. <laughs> This guy's lawyer is not doing him any favors. Wait a minute, I remember now. Mr. Saw It. Yeah, this song, this song goes pretty hard. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility, Karen. That, uh... The way that and you seem rather distraught because you can't seem to stop moving. Uh, my, my apologies, Your Honor. It uh, must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Saw It. Let's hear your testimony again, please. How many chances are they going to give this guy? Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Well, there was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? J yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Well, this guy sucks at lying. Must have been what I saw. You guys already know what this one is, right? It's the, it's the, it's the weapon. <clears throat> they gave witnesses so many chances, it's awful. So if this is really how it was in Japan... That's messed. That's incredibly messed up. Yeah, we know the weapon is this buff Bagwell ass looking dude. The thinker. You can say about and around, but you can't say the time. Correct, Beth. You saw a clock, huh? <clears throat> the defense may cross examine the witness. Gladly. Gladly. Phoenix Wright's getting cocky now. Well, actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. And there, uh, there was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, uh, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Sir. Wait, wait, wait. If I say it was this, they're gonna be like, yeah. But what if I say it's this? Hold it, buddy. Wait just a sec. Hmm. <laughs> The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now, how is that supposed to be a clock? Oh, we're, the music's kicking in. We're getting his ass. You with your objections and your evidence. Just who the hell do you think you are? Answer the question, Mr. Saw It. Uh, hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. Oh, that is whack. You kidding? As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. Hmm, I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. The judge is dumb as hell. Well, Mr. Wright. It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? <clears throat> well... I hope this isn't how the judges were at that time. I have a problem with this testimony. I thought this was done. Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Damn, thanks, Phoenix. 
picking up the slack. This guy's a pretty good. This guy's a pretty good lawyer. Yet the witnesses testified that he never entered the apartment. Okay, I fell ass backwards into that one. It's clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. Well, I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Phoenix, super smart. That was the sound you heard. Oh shit, he right, bro. Yeah, he right. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. It's almost time for my nap. Yes, Your Honor. Some of the stupidest characters of this series of Road to Love. I like this Larry Butts guy. Mr. Saw It. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon just spoke. Uh, weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Help me! What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. It's a bunch of bullshit, Your Honor. Uh, baseless? My ass! Just look at the witness's face! Uh, would the witness care to elaborate on their damn face? Did you strike the victim with the clock? The, I... That day, I, I never... <laughs> oh fuck, I missed that part. Damn, he just ripped his head off? Shut up, I hate you. It was him, I tell you, I saw him. He, he, he killed her, and he should burn. Burn! Give him death. Oh shit, man said give him death, isn't it? Wow. Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Uh, Mr. Wright? Your Honor? You claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Uh, y your honor. The sound Mr. Saw had heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Clock might run on batteries. Ask the neighbors? There's no there's no other characters. I'm going for sound. Mm. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. It's not great. I think it's 825. Oh, that's good. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. No, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's, uh, 11.25. Yep. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. I feel like Phoenix does most of the work. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Saw it heard uh, what he heard in the actual time of death. So, Mr. Saw it. Try to talk your way out of this one, you bald headed asshole. Uh, ah! You forgot one thing. Uh, what's this about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. And how did you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Ah. Man, they really make you go the extra mile, huh? Man, it was so close. 
It's like it's as if the judge is just asleep during the whole thing. Uh, Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Ah. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Solid. How, wait, how though? I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal, a dog. You lawyers are all slime. Man, I almost had that son of a bitch. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. But I thought she died at four and he was there at one. Isn't that three hours? There's nothing I can do about it now. Did I miss something? <clears throat> oh damn, Mia jumps in. Not so fast, Mr. Side. The hell she come from? Mia? <laughs> I mean, oh chief. Listen up, Bright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yeah. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. To ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Killing me. <clears throat> to the fourth name, there was some stuff. Where I did recognize some story beats. Hmm. I guess by the fourth game, he's a pretty good attorney. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Right? Yes. Mia. Yes. Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course, Your Honor. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Done. Take that. Rewind it back. Um, excuse me. This proves your claim, how? I can't see what the evidence- he is dumb, but the evidence has to do with the clock. That wasn't it. Wait, that wasn't it? Uh, that wasn't it. Alright, Mr. Wright, but this is not- time is not on your side. Be quick about it. Hmm, evidence that proves why it was running slow. Hold on. Well, it can't be the passport, not the autopsy, obviously it's not the badge, can't be the thinker. Electricity was out from noon to 6 p.m. It's the passport? Oh my god, you really have to pay attention. <clears throat> victim arrived home from Paris. So I guess they're saying that the time zone difference was the thing. Oh man, that's sneaky. I'm gonna have to stop making these dumb voices and pay attention. <laughs> Take that. It threw me off because it said the day before. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. I, I don't know that. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. 
That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Damn, good looking out, Gordon. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw It. Or should I say, Mr. Dunn did it. No. <laughs> that man foaming at the mouth. Man, that boy foaming, bro. Oh, order, order, I say. Oh, man. I wonder how many people actually got that on their first try. There's no way I would have thought that the game... It's also because it's the first case, so you don't know how... You don't really know how uh, deep the game wants you to go on analyzing stuff. But I think that's a good first case to let you know you are in for some shit. You know? It's letting you know, hey, this isn't going to be a walk in the park. But, I mean, I, there's no way I could have known that. That's wild. It's like an adventure game. Wait till you see the others. Well... This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He... the... he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Hmm, very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. Got my chest puffed out. I'm the man. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butt, not guilty. Ye not guilty. And with that, the court is adjourned. Not bad. <clears throat> You did, but again, I didn't know the time difference. You knew the time difference was the reason. Yeah, I was stumped. Uh, it turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saw it left himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Saad grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find and beat her down. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Ooh, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. And Gordon. <clears throat> Gordon, you're like Chief. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. Kind of. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. <laughs> Good. But wait, no, I mean, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed, man. But, oh yeah, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. He needs to, like, pull Larry aside and be like, Larry, it, it been over for a while, bro. She even went overseas. Met some new people. Larry, she was a... Never mind. Uh, congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> Um, thanks. I really owe you one. She doesn't even know this guy's name. She doesn't care about him. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, uh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook, man. Oh, hey. 
Here, take this. It's a present. Dude, this guy sucks. Have the weapon that was used to kill this lady I loved. Just take it with you. A, a present for me? Wait, was it the, the evidence that... The, actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Uh-oh. Really? You, you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And he was just playing me for a fool. <laughs> Doesn't that make you just want to cry, man? Larry. <laughs> Mia's gonna sell that statue. Are you sure? Squeeze me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, right. What the hell is she talking about? Uh, yeah, check out this blackout record. Um... Maybe it's the statue, because she kept the statue. <clears throat> Going for it. Take this statue. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock. That's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling, Larry. Huh. Oh. Well, make of it what you will. Hmm. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am, thanks. Well, I, I hope that made him feel a little better. What a chump. What a schmuck. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Facts, right? They're gonna... They're gonna ride this right shit into the ground, huh? That was my thought during the case. To be honest, who takes a heavy clock with them on a trip? She must have been into him a little bit. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, a part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Mia. I'm interested. And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I feel like the game could have ended there. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I wouldn't be able to keep. Oof. The end.
That was sweet. That was great. So each one of these, it will be its own little episode. A brand new episode has been added. I'm liking the art in this one. All right, I started kind of late, so I'm actually going to have to stop it there. <clears throat> but the next time I play this, I'm going to do the next case. And uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, cool game. And I got three of them for 10 bucks. How can you beat that? But uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. I'm going to get to bed early. And then uh, I'll see you dudes later this week. Thanks, y'all too. Thanks for the help, Gordon.